1 Peter 2, 11 to 25. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, uh, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom to cover up for, pe for evil. Live um, as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good, you endure it, and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. Uh, when he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. First Peter 2, 11 to 25. We are at the end of First Peter 2. In the first chapter of this letter from Peter, the Apostle Peter reminds his readers that they face the struggles in this life on earth as God's chosen people. They are exiles and foreigners waiting for the day when God brings them home to be with God in heaven. What makes them the chosen people of God? Jesus Christ, God's chosen son, the living stone. He is the cornerstone of God's house. It is Jesus Christ who saves them and makes them God's spiritual house, that is, God's people. However, Jesus is also a scandal to the people around them. Jesus died on a cross the most despised form of execution in the Roman Empire. They reject the scandalous Jesus. They persecute those who follow Jesus. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. First Peter 2. 11 to 12. As foreigners and exiles, how do they live their lives among such hostile people? Peter reminds them that they are in the world, but not of the world. Their lives should reflect the values of God and glorify Him. They are to live good lives among the people who do not know God yet personally. They are to be the people of God who practice good deeds and glorify God in all that they do until Jesus returns. Then Paul addresses two difficult situations they live in. First, this is the first century. Slavery is a way of life. A household in the Roman Empire has slaves living with them. These slaves look after their master and the master's family. The Holy Spirit brings good news, uh, the good news of Jesus Christ to these households with slaves. Entire households with slaves embrace Jesus as the Son of God and Savior. However, there are some slaves who belong to masters who are not sympathetic to Jesus. These non-believing masters make life difficult for these believing slaves. How are they to face these hostile masters? 1 Peter 2 verse 18. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. These slaves with unfriendly masters are to submit themselves 
to these unfriendly masters. However, Peter is clear that when they do this, they do so out of a reverent fear of God. In other words, they submit themselves to God first before they submit themselves to their hostile slave masters. Uh, in some places in the Roman Empire, the local Roman authorities who represent the emperor are also not friendly to these followers of Jesus. This is a second category of people that Peter writes about. Peter advises his readers to submit themselves to these unfriendly authorities for the Lord's sake. 1 Peter 2, 13 to 14. Submit yourselves to the, for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to command those who do right. Therefore, Peter's advice to his readers is to submit themselves to hostile leaders because of two things, the reverent fear of God and for the Lord's sake. I belong to a small group of people in my church who pray every Wednesday afternoon. There are four of us. Uh, we pray at 1.30 p.m. every Wednesday. Um, this prayer initiative started many years ago on Wednesday evenings. We moved it to Wednesday afternoons. Uh, during this prayer time, we named two countries in the world in which the followers of Jesus Christ live in minority situations. We pray for these families who are persecuted for their faith. It is not easy when your faith in Jesus is regarded as hostile uh, by the rest of the population. Um, their families also face discrimination in whatever they do, in the schools and in business. Peter advises these families to go beyond the culture they live in. 1 Peter 2, 16-17 Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone, love the family of believers, fear God, honour the emperor. We need to pray for our sisters and brothers who live in such hostile countries. May God give them and their families strength and courage. Peter also says that there are governments who do their job and protect us uh, as citizens. Um, he talks of governors whom God sends to punish those who do wrong and to command those who do right. First Peter 2 verse 14. Uh, he talks of governing authorities who really do their job and protect people. In our Wednesday prayer team meeting, we also pray for our federal, provincial, regional, and city authorities who do all they can right now to protect us, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. We pray that they give us all the information we need to keep us safe, safe and to recommend all those important steps to follow. Right now, as citizens, during these difficult times, we follow their guidelines and keep ourselves safe. As we meet in our worship gathering in the church facility right now, we follow those Ontario Ministry of Health guidelines for places of worship. We thank God for providing us a country whose many levels of government do all they can to protect us from the coronavirus. We should not take this for granted. We should pray to God that God keeps everybody safe and equips all the levels of government to look after us. 1 Peter 2, 20 to 22. However, but how e is it for your credit when you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, it this is commendable before God. To these you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example um, that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. In submitting themselves to cruel slave masters, Peter refers to an example of a person who himself submitted uh, to hostile authorities. Peter refers to the path that Jesus took as he went to the cross. Jesus was falsely accused by the Jerusalem temple religious authorities 
for desecrating the temple and claiming himself to be the son of God. Um, Jesus was falsely charged for blasphemy. Then Jesus was taken to the Roman governor Pilate who sentenced him to death on the cross. What does Jesus do as he goes through this process? 1 Peter 2 verse 22. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. Jesus leaves them an example that they should follow in his steps. Right now, when they submit to hostile local authorities or to cruel slave masters, they are following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 Peter 2 verse 23. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Jesus does not respond to the insults and beatings he receives at the hands of his accusers. However, Peter makes it clear that it is not mere submission to the Jerusalem temple religious authorities or to the Roman imperial leaders. Jesus entrusts himself to him who judges justly. Who is this person who judges justly? In 1 Peter 4 verse 19, this person who judges justly is also known as the faithful creator. 1 Peter 4 19. So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Jesus provides the example for the readers of 1 Peter to submit themselves to God as they submit themselves to unfriendly authorities. He submits, uh, he says to them that when they do so, they are following the example of Jesus. So why does Jesus do what he does? First Peter 2 verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Jesus submits himself to these unfriendly authorities and goes to the cross to die for the sins of the world. He dies on the cross for us. He dies on the cross for you and for me. By his wounds we are healed. He dies to bring healing to us. Jesus is not only their shepherd, Jesus is also the lamb who sacrificed himself on the cross for them. Jesus is both shepherd and sacrificial lamb for them. Jesus is not only our shepherd, Jesus is also the lamb who sacrificed himself on the cross for us. Jesus is both the shepherd and sacrificial lamb for us. Jesus looks after us in the most profound way. Jesus is the shepherd and overseer of our souls. We know Stephen Colbert as the host of The Late Show, which appears every weeknight. Uh, however, tragedy struck his family when he was 10. An interviewer of the New York Times magazine ran this story about the faith of the talk show host and comedian Stephen Colbert. In 1974, when Colbert was 10, uh, his father, a doctor, and his brothers Peter and Paul uh, the two closest to him in age died in a plane crash while flying to a prep school in New England. There's a common explanation that profound sadness leads to someone's becoming a comedian, but I'm not sure that's a proven equation in my case, he told me. I'm not bitter about what happened to me as a child, and my mother was instrumental in keeping me from being so. Um, he added in a tone so humble and sincere that his character would never have used it. She taught me to be grateful for my life regardless of what entailed. And that's directly related to the image of Christ on the cross and the example of sacrifice that he gave us. What she taught me is that the deliverance God offers you from pain is not no pain. It's that the pain is actually a gift. What's the option? God doesn't really give you another choice. I repeat the words of Colbert. She taught me to be grateful for my life regardless of what entailed. And that's directly related to the image of Christ on the cross 
and the example of sacrifice that he gave us. What she taught me is that the deliverance God offers you from pain is not no pain. It's that the pain is actually a gift. What's the option? God doesn't really give you another choice. Peter has just reminded his readers that Jesus did not retaliate when the Jerusalem temple religious leadership and, uh, and Pilate, the Roman governor, went through the process of putting him on the cross. Instead, Jesus submitted himself to the process. Instead, Jesus submitted himself to him who judges justly. Instead, Jesus submitted himself to the faithful creator. This is how Peter explains Jesus' path on the cross and the application in our lives. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. 1 Peter 2, 25. God oversees the pain we experience in our lives. He helps us as we go through the pain. He is the shepherd and overseer of our souls. He helps us look beyond our pain. He himself has endured the same pain on the cross. He has been through it. Therefore, he has earned the right to shepherd us through the pain. He oversees our paths through the storms of life. Amen.